بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحده الوقت أطم من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله yesterday we began سورة الليل we began سورة الليل and we we covered the first section in it wherein Allah سبحانه وتعالى begins by making an oath by the systems of his creation. He makes an oath by the night and the day and then makes an oath by makes an oath by himself but referring to the cre referring to himself as the creator of of uh, the male and the female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this oath and you can reflect what the oath is about but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes uh, clarifies almost immediately after by saying in the sahya kum la Indeed, your your uh, your striving is uh, is of is of two types. Your striving uh, is divergent, meaning of two types. The the mufassirin have said that Imam Shokani he said that uh, the two paths being uh, spoken about here is the path leading to Jannah and the path leading to Jahannam, paradise and hell. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by showing us contrasting pairs within his creation. Pairs meaning systems within the creation. We said the night and the day is a pair, it's a system within the creation. We talked about how the, the night is a trigger for the human body clock. We talked about all the benefits of the night and how we humans benefit from the night. We talked about the day and how we benefit from the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that these, although they're a pair, they're, they're distinctly different. The night and the day, they have completely different qualities. Men and women have completely different qualities. Uh, they have completely different characteristics and they have completely different needs. They are not the same. They are not the same. So you can't, you can't uh, deal with one or the other in exactly the same way. You have to take into consideration its qualities or his or her qualities, characteristics, and needs. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us this. Now, he subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to say, indeed, you, uh, your efforts are diverse. Your efforts are diverse. Uh, Imam al-Shawkani, uh, and many of the Mufassirin have said that this, this, uh, this uh, diversity is, uh, is uh, this division here, is uh, between the two groups. There are many groups, many uh, divisions amongst the humans and we find many, uh, whether it's nationality, whether it's religious beliefs, there are many different uh, di divisions amongst, amongst us humans. But as for the divisions with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned by Ibn Kathir also, there's only two, there's only two paths. There's only two paths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear through revelation and this is not just the revelation of the Quran, that which came before it, the, the Injil, the Torah, all of, all, of, all of the revelations, they came to teach the same message. The message is the same. In principle, the message is the same. The message of Tawheed, the message of staying away from taking partners with Allah in any form, whether it be, um, whether it be with, in actual worship, or whether it be in the type of worship where we're we making a sacrifice or we don't sacrifice to other than Allah. So regardless of what it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us there's, there's, uh, there's the, the common theme or the central pillars of all, all the, all the rev revelations have been the same. Have been the same. And, uh, and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed Al-Islam as the final revelation and has, has promised to preserve this until the Day of Judgment. Preserve this until the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ was sent with the heaviest burden from amongst all of the Prophets and Messengers. Why? Because his message was to reach all of mankind and jinn. So Allah SWT tells us that the divisions here are two. One leading to paradise, one, lead, one leading to, to hell. Now, he SWT refers to it refers to our deeds. It refers to our deeds in, in this surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that we've been, we humans, we've been given a freedom of choice. This is what makes us human. 
This is what also makes us accountable and this is what gives us superiority over the pious, the pious human is more superior than even the angels. Why? Because the angels, they have been created on a natural disposition to worship Allah and not disobey. They don't have a choice in the matter. They've been created on the, on, on the, on, on the disposition of, of, of worship, of obedience. When I say worship, I mean obedience. The synonym, synonymous. Now, here, humans and jinn, we've been given a choice. We've been given a choice, and uh, according to that choice, uh, we can become from the, the most superior of creation, or we can be of, of, uh, of lesser than that. And, uh, and what gives us that superior, superiority is that we choose to believe in Allah. Allah allows us to choose, make a choice here. And so we choose to believe in Allah. If we choose, we can disbelieve. And, uh, and Allah doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't make it an obligation. Well, it's an obligation, but it isn't forced upon us in the dunya. But as for the, the Day of Judgment, as for the Day of Judgment, there'll be, no, there'll be no choice in anything. Whether you believe or you, d you didn't believe in the dunya, you'll be subdued on that day. There'll be no power except the power of Allah. No one will have the ability to speak or do anything except by the permission of Allah. Except by the permission of Allah. So we said that here, Allah SWT points to the different divergent paths. The, and they're distinctly different. The path leading to paradise and the path leading to hell are distinctly different. The character, characteristics of the people traversing, traveling on, on these paths are very, very different. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, describes these people for us. Now, the thing that differentiates us is the deed, the action, the thing that we do. And it could be, it could be, a, it could be something that is pleasing to Allah, in which case we are from the people of uh, the, the path leading to paradise. Or you are doing something which displeases Allah, and then you, you're from the other path, leading, leading to the hellfire. So, you have a choice in, in the deed that you choose. And we said that if you choose the deed, like if you want to know which path, you're, which destination you're headed towards, because we only have two destinations, which destination we're headed towards, all you have to do is look at the deeds that you're doing. Regardless of what you proclaim, Regardless of what you, uh, how you look and, and what you tell the people and the image that you'd like uh, others to see of yourself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, knows that which is in your heart. And you and I, we, we know that which is, that we know what our deeds are. So I can look at my deeds and I can, I can, uh, I can try and uh, judge which path I'm hoping to be upon. And the thing is, even the deed there is based upon your intention. Right? So you can do a good deed, but you did it with a bad intention. And that, doesn't, that, that, me, that, that nullifies the deed, meaning that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, bring you the fruits of that deed. So here, the deed is done. We know uh, in the beginning of Ramadan, we mentioned uh, the hadith, in the al-a'mal bin niyat. Now, obviously, every deed is by, by that which you intend. So obviously, uh, to intend the pleasure of Allah or the displeasure of Allah. So obviously, a disobedience is the displeasure of Allah and obedience is the pleasure of Allah. So if you, if you, you can look at your deeds and you can decide which way you're headed. You know at least in which direction you're headed. You don't know whether you're going to reach the destination. And for that, we're, we're constantly in our daily, in our daily salah, the, the khams salawat, the five daily prayers, we are saying, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Allah guide us, guide us continuously. 17 times a day at a minimum, we're saying, اِحْدِنَا سَرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ oh Allah, guide us to that path. Guide us to that path. Keep us, on, uh, keep us on that path. The path of those upon whom your anger isn't. And, uh, and of course, those who didn't go straight. Like, uh, so here, we're, we're, making this, we're making this dua on a daily basis. And we're looking at hadiths. Allah subhanahu wa says, describing the people of this path, Allah subhanahu wa says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى so these people, they are whom? They are those who give. A'ta wa taqa mean uh, they give and they have taqwa. And we said taqwa is love, hope and fear. Love meaning uh, obedience to Allah. Hope, hope uh, hoping in the mercy of Allah when we fall short. And fear, uh, staying away from that which Allah has prohibited. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the characteristics of these people is those who are giving. Allah says they are giving people. So they're giving. They're giving in charity. They're giving in the, it, from themselves to, to, to help others. They are generous people. They're generous people. They're giving and uh, they have taqwa. And then his one Allah says, وَصَدَّقَ husna," And they believe in Al-Husna. And uh, Imam Shawkani, he said that this is uh, Iman, uh, Iman bi la ilaha illallah. Iman bi la ilaha illallah. To believe in Allah as the only God. The Almighty, the Almighty God. And of course, to believe in that which uh, He sent forth to us. Meaning Iman, the, the uh, Islam. Uh, Zamashiri, he said that this amount, this is tantamount to Al Islam. And all that is contained within it. So here we know now that uh, the characteristics of the people of uh, paradise, the people uh, traversing that path, on that path, heading towards paradise, is that they are giving people. They are giving, they, are, they have taqwa. And you can translate taqwa maybe like to have a God consciousness, to be aware of Allah at all times. Because if you're aware of Allah, uh, you, you, you stay away from that which displeases Him. If you're aware of Him, you try and do that which pleases Him. And you never feel, uh, you never feel uh, hopeless. In the mercy of Allah. So here, Allah says that these are the people that believe, that have taqwa, and they are giving. But Allah mentioned giving first. Allah mentioned giving first. So that, that, that has a significance here. And then He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasanu uh, yasiruhu lil yusra. And then we will make it easy for them. If, if they have these three characteristics, then we will make this path easy for them. So this is the people of paradise. This is the people of paradise. And then He subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to describe the people. The, con the contrast here, which is the complete opposite, the people of the other path, leading, leading, leading to the hellfire. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى And as for those who are stingy, miserly, those who are greedy, بَخِلَ الْبُخْلَ is uh, to be uh, miserly, to be stingy, to, be cover, to cover what you have. In other words, not to be given, to be of the complete opposite, someone who is not giving, someone who is not giving and always holds on to everything, all me, myself and I. So Allah SWT says, أَمَّا مَنْ بَغِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَاسْتَغْنَى And they see themselves as self-sufficient. They see themselves as self-sufficient. Now, why would someone see themselves as self-sufficient? When would someone see, see themselves in this state? A person usually a person who has amassed a lot of the dunya, amassed a lot of the dunya, whether it be uh, money, cars, houses, whatever it may be, they've amassed uh, an amount of the dunya. The more they amass, the more they feel like they're, they're in no need of anyone else. And specifically, no need of uh, the Creator. So here, these people, they amass, they amass wealth. They amass wealth. And it may be that they don't have a lot, but they have an amount of wealth which uh, makes them feel as though they don't, they're in no need of Allah. They're in no need of Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى This is the opposite of صَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى صَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى To believe in Allah, to believe in Al-Islam, to believe in the Almighty God and all the messengers that He sent including the last and final messenger. So all of the prophets and messengers that came right from Adam alayhi salam, Adam, Noah, all of them right the way to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So this is al-Islam. So Allah said in the first character, the characteristics of the first people were that they believed in all of them. They believed in all of them and they followed them. They followed the meaning what Allah sent them with the message and, uh, and we follow them and that which they bring to us. So here Allah describes the people of the second path, the one leading to uh, the hellfire, as وَكَذَّبَ uh, بِالْحُسْنَى They deny, they reject. They deny and they reject categorically. Whether it's because of doubt, whether it's because of uh, greed, they want to hold on to their, 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 their status, Regardless of what their reason is, they are people who deny and reject. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ إِذَا تَرَدَّى 
and what will what good will their wealth do for them when they are sent down sent down to their destruction sent down meaning sent down to the graves what good will it do because they'll leave it all behind they won't be able to take anything with them it remains in the dunya and then they go back to Allah they go back to Allah but that which they amassed the thing that caused them to be this way remains here remains here Ibn Kathir he narrates he mentions uh, he brings a hadith from uh, uh, which is narrated by uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was in the cemetery of uh, al-Baqi and when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said ma minkum min ahadin illa wa qad kutiba maqaduhu fil uh, min al-janna wa maqaduhu min al-nar there is not a single one of you except his place in paradise or his place in the hell has already been reserved, has, has already been written for him. Meaning that Allah in his infinite knowledge, Allah is in, in his infinite knowledge, knows the choices we're going to make. Because you know when we talk about the deeds, the deeds, we said the deeds are like a signpost to paradise or a signpost to hell. Every deed sends you to a yet another deed which will allow you to go further down that same route. That deed, you have to choose that deed. And so Allah knows the choices. So here, He says, He sallallahu alayhi wa says that every one of us, it has been written for us already, whether we are from the people of paradise or from the people of hell. So the companions, they turned to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, then if that is the case, O Messenger of Allah, should we depend upon this? Meaning that, you know, should we just live because uh, it's already been written and we can't affect this uh, decision? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the contrary, he said, اِعْمَلُوا فَكُلُّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِكَ لَهُ He says, اِعْمَلُوا uh, Do the deeds. Do the deeds. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, don't, don't just leave it to, to chance. Do the deeds. <coughs> Choose the deeds. Choose the deeds. Like, the, for, for, every, everyone, for every one of you, the deeds, if you are from the people of paradise, then the deeds of the people of paradise will be made easy for you. And obviously, if you're, the, if you're from the people of hellfire, then the deeds of the people of hellfire will be made easy for you. Meaning that Allah will facilitate this. So make the choice. Do the deeds. So he Allah he said, you can't rely upon this. You have to do the deeds. You have to do the deeds. You have to, you have to choose the right deeds. So in effect, you have the ability to determine your ultimate destination. You choose your destination. But Allah in His infinite knowledge, because He is all-knowing. He is all-knowing. So in His infinite knowledge, He knows the, the, He knows everything right till the end. He knows that the, the decisions that we will make. The decision that I make today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew this like many, 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 many uh, tens of thousands of years before I was even created. In fact, this was all written 50,000 years before the cre we were created. So here, Allah uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, uh, uh, do the deeds. And then, uh, and then he وسلم, recited the, the verse, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى So look, he's not, he's not negative. The, the, the Prophet وسلم, is showing his, his uh, companions that do the deeds, like it's already been written for you where you're headed. Do the deeds because you are going to do the deeds that will make it easy for you to get to your destination, whether it's the paradise or hell. But don't don't be negative and think, oh, then it may be that I, I'll, I'll go to I'll go to uh, I'll go to the hellfire. In fact, he saw Allah this time. Instead, he didn't he didn't recite the verse "Amma man bakhila wa stagna." He recites "Fa amma man aata wa taqa." So as for the one who is giving and has taqwa, to say that. You will be from these people, inshallah. So do the, peop do the deeds of the people of Jannah. Choose the deeds. Now in, the, in, the, in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us again, like an, uh, a contrast, an opposite. The, the two, two, uh, two different parts, one to paradise and one to hell. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala describes for us, for us the people, the characteristics of the people of each part. And the thing is, why does the Prophet inform us? 
by informing us, we are, we are able to choose where we're, where we're going. We, are, we know that we ultimately, uh, we are the ones who decide where we're going to end up. We are the ones who decide. By choosing, by deciding on the deeds that we do, we are deciding on the, on the ultimate destination, whether it's paradise or whether it's uh, hell. And, 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 and God Almighty, in His infinite knowledge, knows all of this already. So, Allah SWT says, in the sa'yakum la shatta, indeed your, your efforts are diverse. Meaning, uh, your, your, your efforts here, like this is, this is your toiling in the, in the dunya. This is your toiling in the dunya. The thing about this verse is that the, the arrogant person, the one who is bakhi, the one who is, uh, uh, is being described as the person from the, uh, the stingy one, from the, from the root leading to the hellfire, you can, you can understand why, how a, a rich, wealthy person can become arrogant <coughs> and, and become like this. Musa alayhi salam, he, uh, he complained to Allah about Fir'aun. And he said to Allah that because of all the wealth that he's been given, because of all the, all the, all the dunya that he's amassed, he's become like this. The Prophet of Allah could see clearly what brought him to that. But what about the one who doesn't have anything? Doesn't have anything, but is still very arrogant. Very arrogant and, and denies, that which, <coughs> denies that which Allah has sent, sent to them. Denies the goodness that Allah sends to them. For this one is, is, is far worse than the other. Because they have nothing to be arrogant about, yet they're arrogant. And the thing is, the one who strives in this path, they will toil, they will toil to attain and amass the dunya. But the thing is, it'll never be enough. It will never be enough. The dunya will never be enough. And the, and the, and the ironic thing is, in the end, when we, when we return to Allah, we'll leave everything behind. we leave everything behind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to uh, then continues <coughs> and goes on to inform us about where the guidance is coming from. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna alayna lal huda. Indeed, guidance is upon us. Meaning, th- this is the us, the, the we of majesty. Meaning, guidance is upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ibn Kathir explains this saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means by this that we will explain to you that which is lawful and that which is prohibited. Because the lawful is that which gets you to paradise. The prohibited is, is that which gets you to uh, hellfire. And so Ibn Kathir explains this. And he says, so whoever traverses this path, whoever travels on this path of guidance, then uh, he will reach Allah. He or she will have no issue because they're choosing the deeds of that path. They're choosing the deeds of that path. So Allah, as He said, but He subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will make easy for them. Make, make, uh, it's sometimes translated as smooth the path to paradise. But smooth not meaning that you won't be tried. You will be tried because this is the dunya. And that's the very nature of the dunya, that we're here to be tried and tested. To see which uh, destination we end up in. And then He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ لَنَا لَلْآخِرَةَ وَالْأُولَى Indeed, to me belongs the the akhira. The akhira that you're denying here, it belongs to me. Lana again the 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 lana here uh, to us, meaning the us of majesty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to me belongs this akhira, the one that you're denying. And and then he subhanahu wa ta'ala says and and the ula, the and the first. And the first meaning the dunya. The dunya. So to Allah belongs the dunya and the akhirah. So we're amassing the dunya. Allah mentions the akhirah first because it has far greater significance. It's eternal. Whereas the dunya is short-lived. 
and dunya, the, the word uh, the, the word dunya uh, in its uh, linguistic meaning it means the lowest it means the lowest so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has named the world as dunya as to mean the lowest place to be so we're, we're competing with one another to hold on to this and to stay here as long as we can and to amass as much as we can but this is the lowest and the, 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 the one with high aspirations the one with high aspirations would, would, would be aiming for the highest would be aiming for the highest and along with the highest you would attain, you would attain the dunya as well but the thing is if we, if we aim for the lowest you'll miss everything above that if you aim for the lowest you miss everything above that and and the most and the most uh, the, the, the the tragedy about this is that the lowest is 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 for a fixed period and that period will be over and then thereafter it will be uh, eternal it will be eternal so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elaborates here indeed guidance is from us so I am the one who gives guidance the messenger of Allah is the means by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the people. But he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives guidance. And through this saying, فَسَنُوا يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that we will make it easy for you. Choose the right deeds and we will make this path easy for you. Allah is extending his mercy. He is extending his mercy. And how is he doing this? By sending the messengers. By sending the messengers, by sending the, the, the halal and the haram, by sending the rules which pertain to our life. The Qur'an is about the dunya. The Qur'an is to help us to, to achieve a, a level of harmony in the dunya. It's not for the hereafter, because in the hereafter, we're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise, inshallah. So the Qur'an is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the book of instructions for us in the dunya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent with, with the Qur'an, as He sent with all of the message, messages before, a messenger to explain that. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the end, your return is to me. Inna lana lal akhirata wal ula. The, the, the akhirah is for us. So, there's no escaping it. You can hold on to the dunya as much as you like, but you can't escape it. You will, uh, you will go back. You will go back to Allah. It's, uh, it's as simple as uh, the, you know, the, divine, the divine rule of uh, gravity. What goes up must come down. And so by the very nature, this is the, this is the universal rules of Allah. So by, the very, very, uh, by the virtue of us coming into the dunya, we must go back. And we know that, we know that. No one has to prove that to you. But we know that everyone goes. No one, doesn't matter how much you deny Allah, doesn't matter what you deny, you deny the prophets, you deny who, whatever it is you deny, it. but no one denies death. No one denies death. So we know that we're, we're heading back to Allah. And Allah tells us very explicitly, very clearly, you cannot mistake where you're going back to. <coughs> you cannot mistake where you're going back to. And then He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and so I have warned you I have warned you of a, of a fire of a, of a nar is one of the names of uh, uh, the hellfire a fire which is which is sizzling a sizzling fire now Ibn Kathiri says about this he, he narrates the hadith from uh, in, in, in hadith uh, narration in the collection of Imam Ahmed, from which was narrated by uh, Abu Ishaq, that he heard a Nu'man ibn Bashir giving a sermon in which he, he said, I heard the messenger of Allah. This is one of the companions. I heard the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa say, verily the person who will, be, who, will be, who will receive the lightest punishment, who will receive the lightest punishment on the day of judgment, will be, will be a person who will have two coals placed under the soles of their feet. And from the effects of this coal, their, their brain will boil. 
their brain will boil. This is also narrated by, uh, in the collection of Imam Bukhari. Now, this is, imagine this. This is the lightest of the punishments. <coughs> the lightest of the punishments on the Day of Judgment. To have two coals placed under the, the sole of the feet and the brain boils from this. We can't imagine anything like it. We can't imagine anything like it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يصلها إلا الأشقى لا يصلها إلا الأشقى None shall burn therein except the most wretched, except the most evil. None will enter this, this fire. Allah is telling us, He has already given us a description of the people of paradise and the people of hell. So choose that which we will. Right? But none, Allah makes uh, clear here, no one will enter this. It will not be injustice. There will be no injustice on that day. Only the most wretched, the evildoers, they will enter this fire. Only the wretched, the evildoers will enter this fire. And they will burn therein forever, having no rest, no relaxation. No coolness, nothing to quench their thirst. And as, as uh, Imam Razi said, every time their, their flesh starts to uh, uh, disintegrate and become ash, Allah will rejuvenate their bodies and they will continue to be punished. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are the two <coughs> divergent paths. They're very, very distinctly different. You can't mistake one for the other. It's as clear as the day and the night. It's as clear as the day and the night. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala says that only the wretched, the evil ones, will enter this fire. And inshallah we'll finish there. Subhanakallah ma bihamdika wa shadu wa la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu laika. Jazakumullah khair.